Hello everybody and welcome back to part 2. This time we'll introduce the physics engine and create all the entities that are necessary to get our little car up and running. To start using our physics engine we have to wrap the scene components with the physics component from React Tree Canon. That will give us access to all the hooks that are necessary to create colliders in our scene and all the physics objects that will be displayed in our racetrack. You can probably guess what's happening here. I'm setting the gravity to move along the minus y axis by 2.6 meters per second, which is quite a lot lower than the gravity that we actually experience here on Earth. But setting a low value here will make it possible to jump a lot higher on the ramp. And so that's why I'm decreasing the gravity here. And here we're setting the algorithm that is going to be used for the broad face of the collision detection system. And honestly, you don't really need to know what a broad face is, but if you're really curious, this wonderful blog post goes over the concept and it explains how modern physics engine are trying to detect collision. Uh, in general, there's a broad face and a narrow face, and the broad face is the face where you're trying to exclude as many pair of colliders as possible, and SAP happens to be one of the available algorithms that you can use at the broad face. Moving on, we'll have to add the car component and I've added some new constants here that define the dimensions of the car. And then we're using our very first uh, physics hook which is called the use box. Whenever we need to create a new object inside our physics world, we'll have to use one of these hooks to initialize it. And to initialize it, we always need to create a function that returns an object with the properties of our new physics entity. And someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we're using a function instead of directly passing the object because we could receive an index in case we're using an instance mesh. We're also passing a ref object and that will be returned as the first element of the array that is returned by the hook. And we'll take a look later at what the second element of the array does, but to give you a small preview, it's basically a small API that gives you access to some methods. For example, if you want to apply some forces or impulses on the physics object. Something else that is important to note is that our physics entities, like our new box that we're calling chassis body, at this point only exists in the physics engine, but not yet inside our FreeJS world. In fact, FreeJS meshes and physics entities kind of live in different places, and to tie them together, we'll have to create a FreeJS mesh that has the same dimensions of our physics object, and we're doing that with the uh, constructor of the box geometry, and also pass in a reference to the physics box that we created above. So what's going to happen in practice is that the physics engine will use this reference to modify the position and rotation of this mesh according to the law of physics that we specified in our world. And I've commented out the original 3D mesh for a car model because for now I'm only interested in showing you a little box that spawns here when I refresh the page, I hope that you can see it, but there's a little box that spawns and then starts to fall down. And it falls forever into the depths of our 3D world because, well, it's being affected by gravity and there's no ground that stops it from falling down. And guess where our next step will be? Creating a physics object for our ground to make sure that this little box can fall somewhere. Inside the ground component, I've added another hook called the use plane, and this is going to create a ground for our scene. Every plane by default faces forward, and that's why we have to adjust the rotation to let it face up in the y direction. And we're also marking the entity as static. There are three types of bodies in the Canon physics engine. Dynamic bodies, which are affected by forces and have a mass. Also kinematic bodies that aren't affected by forces, but they can have velocity and move around. And the third type of bodies uh, can only be positioned in the world and isn't affected by forces nor velocity, and that's the static bodies. Where well, you can get away with using static bodies, you should probably do that because they are more performant than the other two types. And if you're not specifying a type, it will be by default set to dynamic, like our car component. And since the ground doesn't really move, we don't even have to attach the reference to the mesh object. We can just refresh the page and we'll see that now our little box is going to fall and then stop where the ground is. And we can't move cars without wheels unless they're flying, but that's for another strange tutorial. So for now, we'll create a small hook to create the wheels of our car and then send back a reference to the car component. And I'll be honest, I don't know the meaning of most of these properties, but this preset worked well for our scene, and that's the reason why I'm using it. 
Feel free to experiment if you're brave enough, and when in doubt, you can always reference the official Canon docs. We have to assign these properties for each individual wheel of the car, plus the chassis connection point, uh, which defines the point in space where the wheel will be attached using the local coordinate system of the chassis object. And in this case, the chassis object is the chassis body that we have created in the car component. As a small example to show how the placement works, imagine that the width of our car was 10 units. In this case, we would be positioning the first wheel of the car minus 6.5 units from the center of the car in the x-axis. The shape that we'll make for our wheels is a cylinder and we're setting the rotation to face the outside of the car. And these arguments are used for the radius of the left and right side of the cylinder, plus the length and the number of segments. And now that we have our wheels, we can import them in our car component and use them to create a new Raycast vehicle. This hook will create all the logic that is necessary to initialize the car in our physics world and later we'll be able to manipulate the car with the vehicle API. I'm also changing the return statement to make sure that the mesh of the chassis body is being wrapped by a group component to which we're assigning the ref of the vehicle. Remember, these refs will control the mesh or group that they're assigned to to change the velocity, rotation and position of that group. At this point, our wheels are ready, but they only exist in our physics world. The next step will be to create a debug component to see our wheels in the FreeJS world. And I'll be doing something really simple. I created a component called wheel debug. There's a constant that determines if the group is going to be added or not. And we just have a cylinder geometry with the same arguments that we're specifying in the physics engine. We're setting a mesh normal material. We don't really care that much about the appearance of the wheel because this is just a debug component. So anything that shows something on screen will be fine. And then we're setting the reference of our physics entity object to the group. This will make it possible for our physics engine to control the rotation and the placement in space of this wheel. And you might be wondering why I'm setting the ref to the group instead of a mesh. Well, the reason is that we have to modify the rotation of this mesh because the cylinder geometry by default needs to be rotated to point outside rather from the sides of the car. And on top of this rotation, we want to apply every rotation that our physics engine will calculate for our mesh. And so to compound these two rotations, the easiest way is to just wrap the mesh components with a group and then assign the ref to the group itself. And now that we're good with our TreeJS wheels, we'll flip the debug variable back to true and we're going to include the wheels inside a car component. And there we have it. The physics entity of our car is fully completed and here is it in all of its glory. Okay, well, maybe it's not as glorious as you might have expected, but I promise you that it works. And as long as we hide this clunky box with a good car model, you'll never notice that on a physical level our car is literally just a box with four coins strapped on it. We're running out of time for this episode and I'm sorry if this one has been a bit lackluster, but it served as a basis for what's next. In part 3 we'll learn how to move this ugly box around and we're also going to add all the missing physics entities of the original scene. And I hope to see you in the next one. In the meantime, happy coding!